Hi there, and good evening to Life is Too Short. Um, how are you all doing? Blair and I are a little weary. Here, here he is. Yeah, you <laughs> look like a wee total there. Thank you, Rose. <laughs> Hello. Sorry. <laughs> I'll wait to start. <laughs> um, just the angle that we have our computers. So um, anyhow, I hope you're doing um, well. Um, the weather has been, well, been raining like yesterday and today. I still have my washing out. I forgot to bring it in. Um, you know, we're all get, as I say, we're all getting a little weary. However, we need to be keep positive. You know, keep positive. Even though many of us have had a lot of nightmares recently, um, and I think you know, one week. Um, we might do a show about nightmares because it's really strange. A lot of writers I've spoken to and friends um, have had these like awful nightmares. You know, nightmares where you have to kind of get up and wash your face, you know, type of thing. Um, so I wonder, I wonder if there's a dream or a nightmare expert that could come on and explain it to us. Well, to be fair, this is like a, okay, I'm being positive, but in a way, it's like a nightmare we're not actually waking up from. Right, stop that. <laughs> so, because I'm here, um, we are here. This is Blair and myself, we're here. And I hope if anybody pops in, um, I've, um, you know, welcome anybody. I'll just watch out for the waiting room to see if anybody's there. They're welcome to pop in any time and read a poem or, or any prose. Yeah, getting back to positivity and I know that we should live in the present, but it's nice to reminisce about what we had, you know, um, and how we can um, regenerate that new normal into something that we can, you know, capture. Um, that will happen eventually, but it takes a lot of time. Um, going back a few years, um, to the Edinburgh Fringe, um, which we all miss. I mean, if you go up to Throw a Mile now, it's, you know, it's like a, it's like a ghost town, you know. Um, and, and compared to, to past years, it's so strange. Um, our story is that because it was hustling and bustling with the PBH Fringe, which is phenomenal, um, and Nidgey Street, um, and and up and down the Royal Mile, um, you know, we were having events in Leith at the time, um, the teenage millennium time, uh, from sort of 2013, I think it was, onwards. Um, and so we thought, well, why not invite people down to Leith? And why not invite people, you know, we're... It was another venue. It's actually the Maryland and Morningside. Why not invite people there? But I thought, how am I going to do? How am I going to go about doing that? And it just goes to show if you research a bit, you know, delve into things, you can find that uh, on the fringe uh, participants uh, form, there was a section whereby it, it was free. You could just um, ask for performers to come along to your venue and so that's what we did um and i think one of the first ones we were absolutely gobsmacked um now it will my memory but it'll come it'll all come back to me because you know people that i see now on facebook for example like rose condo um you know she she had met her for the first time our woman with furious words, Katrina uh, Natman, and um, we met her through 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 the uh, you know the fringe of the fringe as we called it then, um, and also Johnny Stanton, you know um, from the Craig Miller Writers Group, um, a phenomenal writer and really an outstanding guy. Um, you know we were kind of. Um, together many 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 events 
and he was there with uh, Heather Turner, Rita, I think Rita Brad came as well. Um, Colin Will actually came as well. Oh my gosh, and Kevin Kilday. Oh wow, it all come back to me. <laughs> um, but you know, to see people that you admire and respect coming through the door, um, and and not with not not forgetting, of course, Gail Smith and Leslie Chainer, um, and then of course, women with fierce words. You know, Carla Woodburn. I'm hoping that she might come on um, later on. She said that she might might pop in if not this week maybe next week but um and hopefully angie stracker in one of these days and peter um and of course jennifer harley as well so i'm going on about everybody because i love you all but anyway getting back to where i was yeah and so we were just going about our business thinking oh just like a few people walk in and I couldn't believe what 50 people and you were there Blair weren't mm -hmm. you? Yes. Um, walked in the door and um, there was a South African gospel choir, there was um, a Japanese comedian, um, I think Don, Donna, Donna, I think, I think um, Donna might have seen, remembered them as well. Um, so when I mentioned Donna, I'm talking, of course, about the anti-poet. Um, and I'm talking about Paul Eccentric, and I'm talking about Ian, the phenomenal anti-poet, because they walked in our doors. And honestly, the energy, do you know how people have lots of energy? Because um, the energy just, the room. Um, and um, so they came in and, uh, that was Paul, Donna and Ian came in um, one year. I, I kind of get mixed up with all the different years because they came back the second year as well. Um, and they, I think, yeah, it was actually Paul, Donna, actually Donna that asked if we could um, hold um, a, um, a book launch. And it was the Edinburgh Fringe in a nutshell book launch. Um, so we held that. Um, and so, um, with with Paul and, and Donna's uh, permission, I'd like to read an excerpt. You know, it's actually prose. It's a fantastic book, and it's about how you know the people that have had experience, you know, booking in the Edinburgh Fringe, the do's and don'ts of it all. Um, and so, I'd just like to read the first one, and it's called. Um, actually, I'll, I'll just read, um, I'll read this one. It's Ivor's Edinburgh Poisons, and it's really quite funny as well. Um, so here we go. Ivor Dembina is the comedian's comedian. In 2011, he was presented with the coveted Spirit of the Fringe Award for his contributions over the years. You see, Ivor has been hunting his waves at the Edinburgh Fringe for just shy of three decades. In 1987, in partnership with Addison Cresswell, the man later responsible for Off the Curve Productions, Ivor opened the very first stand-up comedy venue on the fringe, the Comedy Boom, which featured, among others, a young Julian Cleary. The Comedy Boom ran for five years, only ending when Addison moved over into promotions and Ivor became more interested in performing himself. I was the first person to establish the idea of the comedy package, he tells me, as we reminisce about successes past. Having taken up residency at the Pleasance long before, they emerged as the corporate players that they are today. Ivor ran comic abuse for them for the following few years, presenting such modern day luminaries as Mark Thomas, Felix Dexter and Joe Brand in some of their earliest performances. His other fringe first came in 1994 when he became the first comic to take a solo Jewish show to the fringe in stand-up Jewish comedy. I first met Ivor in the summer of 2011 in the Garden of Pear Tree on West Nicholson Street. I was hosting a ranty and writer's poetry stage in the open air 
whilst Ivor was indoors over overlooking us in a hot, cramped upstairs room, trying to do his one-man show above our racket. If this had been anywhere but the fringe, then I don't doubt that we might have got off on the wrong foot. But being the consummate professional and the old fringe lag that he is, he simply made himself known, closed the window and got on with his show. Since then, we have booked each other tip for tat style on numerous occasions. If you're still stuck for an answer to the question, why do you want to go to the fringe? Well, this would be my answer to it. I go to Edinburgh for the networking opportunities that it provides. Over the almost 30 years that Ivor has been making the artiste pilgrimage, pilgrimage, sorry, pilgrimage from his London home to everybody's favourite North of the Border Festival, he's seen a number of changes. In the mid-90s, he walked away vowing never to return. He felt that the whole event had become far too corporate and branded for purpose. It was supposed to be an arts festival, he opinions. As he chat in the foyer of the National Theatre on London South Bank. New works, you know, become a trade fair and I didn't like it. There are three problems with the fringe as I see it, he continues. Call them Ivers, Edinburgh, Poisons. He removes his trademark woolly hat and positions himself closer to my recorder to make sure that I get them down. One, he tables. The star system. People don't bother to read the reviews. They just look at the stars. Two, awards. They're not there to promote new acts. They're there purely for the sponsors and the organizers. And three, public relations. Every July, you open up the garden to read the best of Edinburgh. It ain't even started yet. Many of those shows haven't been written yet. It's just PR firms placing what they've been paid to do. Ivor did, however, decide to, to return to the fringe with the advent of the free festival in 2006. In fact, he was one of the first of the established comedians to ally themselves with the emerging scene. The Fringe is the place to try something new, he explains soulfully. As a performer who has tried both free and paid methods, I ask him what he feels are the major differences between paying to go with one of the bigger facilitators and throwing in your lot with one or another of the three promoters. What you get with paid is better lights, better sound, better admin, and you get texts and ushers, which in my opinion can be worth paying for. You don't have controls on the door should you need them with a free show. You're effectively on your own. By and large, the quality of the venues is better with the paid. What I don't like, though, he added pointedly, is the idea that because it's a paid venue, that somehow makes it a better show. Because it doesn't. As to his thoughts and reviews and reviewers, he says candidly, in my experience on the whole, reviewers get it right. Even the over-enthusiastic drama student reviewers get it right. I've had the full range in my time. What you need is the confidence not to allow yourself to be put off by bad reviews. Hey. <laughs> that was good. Sorry, I stumbled on a few words there. <laughs> but hey, we carry on, don't we, professionals? And um, I'd like to hand you over, please, to my husband, who has a funny poem, I believe. Well, it's more, not exactly funny, but it's more so sort of ironic. It's ironical. So let's, well, there we go to bed. I don't know. This is a poem by C.T. Cavafy called Waiting for the Barbarians. It's a famous poem about some despair being without direction. When external answer is removed, 
everyone is left floundering. This has got connotations for today, as we know Britain is leaving the European Union. In the Brexit campaign, Brit blamed the European Union and immigration in Britain's wars. With historical context on it, the Visigoths sacked Rome in 410 AD under leader Alaric the Goth, and which started the bearing of the end of the Western Roman Empire. Here it is, waiting for the barbarians. What are we waiting for, assembled in the forum? The barbarians are due here today. Why isn't anything going in the Senate? Why are the senators sitting there without legislating? Because the barbarians are coming today. What's the point of senators making laws now? Once the barbarians are here, they'll do the legislating. Why did their emperor get up so early? And why is he sitting enthroned at the city's main gate in state wearing the gown? Because the barbarians are coming today. And the emperor's waiting to see the leader. He's even got a scroll to give him. Loaded with titles with imposing names. Why have the two consuls and traitors coming out today wearing their embroidered their scarlet togas? Why have they put on bracelets with so many amethysts, rings sparkling with magnificent emeralds? Why are they carrying elegant canes beautifully worked in silver and gold? Because the barbarians are coming today and things like that dazzle barbarians. Why don't the distinguished orators turn up as usual to make their speeches say what they have to say? Because the barbarians are coming today and they're bored by rhetoric and public speaking. Why this sudden bewilderment, this confusion? How serious people's faces have become. Why are the streets and squares emptying so rapidly? Everyone going home lost in thought because night has fallen and the barbarians haven't come. As some of our men just in from the border others say there are no barbarians any longer. Now what's going to happen to us without barbarians? These people are a kind of solution. Thank you. That's great, thank you. Uh, barbarians. Um, so, um, yeah, the Edinburgh Fringe. Now, I think last week I mentioned, and uh, I have to apologise, the Edinburgh International Book Festival was cancelled. And actually, an actual fact, it's actually going to be online from the 15th of August with, uh, I noticed that, with amazing, um, you know, authors. So have a look out, I think it's from the 15th of August to the end of August. Uh, let's all look out for that uh, online. Um, that's quite exciting, really. And I'm sure um, books can be sent to you. Um, and if you're cheeky enough, like I was, you can ask, maybe ask some of the authors to sign them as well. It's great to, to look, you know, years, years to come, um, I can pass these on to the, the children as well uh, to tell them all about our, our adventures of our time. Um, I'm just going to, yeah, I, I'm going to pick up one. We're just going to um, you know, go on for maybe what how, another 20 minutes or so, yeah. see if anybody it pops in. But we'll just keep going until um, until around about, what time is it now, about 8 o'clock or so. Um, but what I'd like to read out, actually, um, is a Federation of Writers Scotland a patchwork poem. Um, it was actually for National Poetry Day in 2019. Um, and it's actually Andy Jackson who does this incredible um, poem every year. All you need to do is send um, send a, a poem or a few lines to uh, AC Clark. The details are actually on the Federation of Writers Scotland uh, website. Um, and what emerges is you, you know you, you you might you know amongst this this amazing poem is one of one line of mine, which I was so proud of, and to see your name as well at the side. Um, do it, honestly. I think Andy tries his best to try and include as many, many writers as he can. Um, I'll read this out, the one from uh, 2019, and the poem is 
Oh, tell me what is there that's true. Why don't we wonder about the exactness of science? Entrails, tea leaves, coffee grounds, ranting and raving on YouTube, fake news, media airtime, deceit so intricate can never leave a fingerprint. Knowledge does not come unbidden. Lies slip easy from foam, froth, lips. Men must never tell the truth. Words slice through my heart. Compass needles point wide of true north. Nothing you can do. Left in the madhouse, we stand firm in a circle. Drunkards, dang, desperate drams, nicked morning, afternoon, from Liverpool to Lisbon, and vino veritas. Grapes turn to raisins, their essence turns to sleet or snow, white in all its brilliance. Truth is what you want it to be. Mine now to embellish if I wish. An image transparent as gossamer. The scent of jasmine blown to the air, a wild rose fine as light, the catch of candlelight singed here, the last of the night, a present that's not really there. We are on a cliff edge now. Put your ears to the ground, hear screams reach like imploring hands, listen hard, you can hear my voice with its own agenda of shadows, trustworthy as an adder's tongue. And all the music is gone. We've lost things in a hundred ways. Um, I'd just like to say who was involved with this poem um, that Andy Jackson wrote, and um, it was Tony Beekman, Janet C. Clark, A.C. Clark, Norma Ann Coleman, Anne Connolly, Janet Crawford, Eileen Farley, Jennifer Harley, Lyde Haywood, Eileen Carney Hume, uh, Alice Jennings, Sarah Jessen, Caroline Johnston, Evie Johnston, Mandy McDonald, Beth McDonagall, Mc McDonald, did I say Beth? McDonald. Beth McDonald. Sorry, Beth. <laughs> um, Anne McKinnon, John McLachlan, Moira McLean, Ross McWinney, Kathleen Mansfield, E. Martin, Lee Montgomery Hughes, Chris Nicholl, uh, Paula Nicholson, B. Parkinson, Cameron, Caroline Richardson, Rose Fraser Ritchie, Alan Robert, Finola Scott, Leela Sama, Martin Stepick, Marie Therese Taylor, Mary Thompson, Leslie Trainer, Lynn Valentine, and Eric Zoa. Thank you. Thank you, guys, and uh, please send your, your lines or your poem to the Federation of Righteous Scotland. Now, I'm just going to let Angie Strachan in, in, in from the waiting room. Um, I'm just going to admit Angie, and hopefully she'll read us a poem as well. Hello, Angie. Hello, how are you? You're being recorded at the moment. <laughs> how are you? Hi, hi. Are you okay? <laughs> Great, thanks. I'm looking so, a bit dishevelled. Oh, I know. I, I had to make sure. Oh my gosh, put the lipstick on. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all quite tired at the moment, you know, with yeah. never ending nightmare sometimes. I know. As I've been feeling really tired recently, yeah. I have. I was just, just saying to folks, you know, um, you know, it's amazing how many people have had some sort of nightmare, you know, over the <gasps> past couple of months, you know. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, it's so great to hear. Um, do you have a poem for us, Angie? Yeah, I can read. I can read a poem. Yeah. I've got one if I can remember. This is one I, I wrote for the radio recently. Oh, excellent! When I was doing that wee oh. bit of work for the radio, um, and it's kind of related to the times, if you see what I mean. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, it's called "Fashion in a Crisis." <laughs> <laughs> kind of like that sums up my look this evening. <laughs> um, Fashion in a crisis is dismal, so it seems. I live in old pyjamas, holy jumpers, faded jeans. I really can't be bothered to care about how I dress. What's the use of dressing up 
when I've no one to impress. A smart shirt clean and ironed hangs neatly in my room. It only gets an outing for work meetings planned on Zoom. Ketchup stains on cardigans, mismatching underwear, tartan t-shirts, tie-dye drawers. I just wear them. I don't care. Yesterday I was upset while on my daily walk. People mocked my strange new look. Strappy sandals without odd socks. I shout, fashion in a crisis. It's a monumental task. I'm sorry I don't own a top that matches my face mask. <laughs> I'm the honest to have a need to, to talk about how I feel. I'm finding this pandemic scary, troubling, surreal. Talking is my PPE. It helps to protect myself. While I'm home, my Skype iPhone take care of my mental health. Thank you. <laughs> Please excuse the children in the background. <laughs> Are they making faces in the window? Oh dear. I mean, you just, you just, you know, it's. I guess, I guess, you know, it's magical in a way because you're just coming on, and Blair hasn't. You haven't heard Angie before, have you? No. That's okay. I knew he would love you, Angie. I knew it. Well, that's the first of your poem. I've got a white shirt on. And ah, where you go? <laughs> I think we're all. I think we're all doing a bit of that just now. Uh, yeah. That yeah. Brilliant. That's, yeah, that's brilliant. If you, I mean, we'd be honoured if you could. If you had another poem, I'll let you. you want, you've got a poem to read. Yeah. If Blair's going to read one, if you've got another one, Angie, that would be amazing. Yeah, I'll have another one if you want. Somewhere. I'll give <laughs> you a somewhere. chance to look for one. Sorry to put you on the spot, but. Uh, no, it's okay. So do one just there or something? No, you just, you just do one from there. Yeah. Um, right, okay, well, I'll just maybe just do. I'll do one. Sorry, right. I've got one. This is uh, continuing in the Roman theme. It's called Tenuous and Precarious by Stevie Smith. Tenuous and precarious were my guardians, precarious and tenuous to Romans. My father was hazardous, hazardous, dear old man, three Romans. There was my brother Spurious, Spurious Posthumus, Spurious was Spurious, there's four Romans. My husband was perfidious, he was perfidious, five Romans. Surreptitious, her son was surreptitious, he was six Romans. Our cat, Tedious, still lives, Kind not tedious yet. My name is Feeny, 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 I am Feeny, six, five, four, three, two, one Roman, Feeny. That was called Tenuous and Precarious. <laughs> so, I'm just going to tell back. my children to shut up. Like Rose is coming back. <laughs> Fabulous, because to Fabulous. let you understand, Blair's, Blair's a historian, so you kind of ah. you like sort of history. Uh, yeah, yeah, I love history. The history that was Roman history, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have another one, Angie, you could uh, share with us. Uh, yeah, um, oh, there's one here. Um, oh, this one's about, this one was written during kind of early part of lockdown when we were finding weird and wonderful things at the back of the cupboard because we couldn't go to the shop anymore. <laughs> It's called Out of Date. My supermarket trips have now been reduced to save me from standing in long winding queues. In this time of crisis, I have resorted to use the forgotten stuff that hides in my house. Weird and wonderful, I have discovered that lurks in the darkness of my kitchen cupboards. Items neglected on the shelves for years, aging, fusty, faded, cluttered, musty, story smears. <laughs> Sugar, rice, flour and spice since 1993. Out of date kidney beans older than me. Long life <laughs> milk that has long since expired. Ancient porridge, bisto retired. It's <laughs> mental that my lentils are older than the queen. My out of date cupboard is truly obscene. I'm not really sure what to do for the best. Take a risk, open a lid, carry out a sniff test. But I have a social duty to protect the NHS. So I keep a distance, resist the germs in my place. I clear and clean my kitchen cupboards, wash my hands and stay safe. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank Thanks you. so much, Angela. That was just amazing. I'm trying to turn my sound up. So. 
Um, ah, that's it. I can hear, hear yeah. better now. Because you're never quite sure with the, the sound. Um, yeah. But I was, I was struggling, early, mm, I was I was struggling just, early on to hear because of the kids, so that's why they tell them to shut <laughs> up. What kind of phone? That was funny. Um, and, you know, if, if you, I mean, if you, if you ha if you have another one, you know, before we finish off, I'd be, honestly be really grateful because that was great, wasn't it? Oh, honestly, you tune yeah. the tune us all up. Now I'm <laughs> gonna go to a really like boring one, but um no. the reason the reason I'm going to this one is because I was just telling everybody about Andy Jackson, you know, writing um the patchwork poem for the Federation of Writers Scotland. Ah right, um, oh yes, the patchwork one, yeah. Um, you know, and all you have to do is send like a you know, a, a line, a couple of lines if uh -huh. you want. And yeah. he tries to include as many lines in as he can. So this is for National Poetry Day in 2019. Yeah. So I'm just going to read this one about, it was actually, again, from the National Poetry Day, and it's called Freedom. Freedom! <laughs> <laughs> freedom! We <want> freedom! freedom. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I am writing words. I am feeling free. I am soaring so high like the birds in the sky. Diving down so deep like the fish in the sea. I am quiet, I am loud. My heart needs release, so I write a poem, something I need. Answers, walking to places or travel by plane, bus or train. Write anywhere, on a mountain or with a baby on my knee. Pen between fingers, words form in my mouth, words tapping on my computer. Well, more often on the phone. I am happy, I am sad. I will write with purpose, passionately at dusk or at dawn. Poems from my heart, trying new techniques. I feel lyrical songs taking me in waves to where the north wind blows. I'm living in the past. I'm looking to the future. I'm living, writing in the present. Feelings, I do belong. Familiar or imagined feelings are what really matter. Poets, well, they come together sharing their words with a tribe. But we can be alone. But freedom means to write. Freedom is the spoken word. Push, push the boat out. Feel the morning breeze. Sun on my skin. Writing this poem. Feeling so free. Yay! That's a lovely poem. That was one for National. Yeah, yeah National Poetry Day. It's amazing what you pull out eh, from the drawer, but um, that's, that's, <laughs> that, that's amazing. Eh. Thanks for yeah. that, for letting me share. That was great. Freedom. Um, <laughs> do you have another one, please, Andy, to share? Yeah, um, oh, if I can remember this one, because I know I've it written down, it was when he. <clears throat> oh, I don't know if I can remember it. Well, I've got one here that's kind of on the kind of. This is a different one. So we do my one about the hairdos. Now we can all go yeah, back to the address. Yeah. Maybe not so relevant. Um, but that, relevant that would be I can't remember. Yes, I'm not yes. going to write it down. So one I've got on the internet, so I can't, I can't remember off the top of my head. So I've, yeah. one. I've got one here about, this was um, kind of written on activism and um, for, uh, during the time I kind of wrote it. And it was because, um, <laughs> do you know where I got the idea from? There was a, there was a protest People were protesting in, in Glasgow. Can't remember what they're protesting about, yeah. but they're uh, they're protesting about the whole kind of like um, COVID thing. They're like, "Come on, the immune systems! Did you see that?" <laughs> they're going, "Come on, the immune systems!" And I thought, and they were doing this kind of week on um, kind of activism, and I just couldn't get the word "come on" <laughs> in my head because it made me laugh so much. So I tried to write something that was upbeat and empowering about how we can come out of this the other end and there might be actually some good things happen mm -hmm. so it's kind of like cheering on the kind of good things that might be able to get us through the whole kind of exactly. crisis. Exactly that sounds yeah. Yeah so I, I needed to write a poem with the word come on in it. Yeah. It's a shame it I couldn't so put it come on it the so systems. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was brilliant. Uh, come on to the scientists who have gained notability. Come on to the upsurge in creativity. Come on to the workers on the front line. Come on to the volunteers that give us their time. Come on to the companies who adapt to survive. Come on to the food supply that keeps us alive. Come on to the people who fight for our NHS. Come on to the people who are just doing their best. 
Come on to community, neighbours who are now friends. Come on to the teachers and new things we have learned. Come on to the internet that keeps us connected. Come on to the carers who keep us protected. Come on to reducing our carbon footprint. Come on to cleaner air, fuel, water, environment. Come on to a world full of hope for our children. Come on to a peace that will last for generations. Come on to putting our well-washed hands in applause. Come on to making a positive future our cause. Come on to the opportunity for the world to work together. Come on to creating a new normal for the better. Thank you. <laughs> Really, really great. So, honestly, I, I'm so happy to hear you. I haven't heard you for ages. Yeah, I've not seen you in ages, yeah. Yeah, have you been on any um, Zoom, Zoom events, um, Jenny? I've not, I've not been to any events, but I've been doing Zoom workshops. I've been to a couple, couple through Lapidus. In fact, oh, yeah. I saw you on the one for Lapidus, that, it was AGM. Right. That was really yeah. interesting, that, wasn't it? Yeah, it was very interesting. Yeah. Did, did you stay on to hear Billy... Oh, what's his name again? I know, I was oh, just trying to remember his name as well. He was, he was really just nice. The guy from the States. The States? Yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. he, was, he was really good. So was engaging, good. engaging us all. And, uh, yeah. I mean, um, because it, it was actually Christy Williams, so we, I, I got in the same... I saw Christy as well. I saw Christy as well. I saw Christy as well. I saw and it was like five minutes or something. We had to write a poem, and uh, we all kind of had to share in about five minutes. But Lapidus, thank you, uh -huh. because you know I just want to say thanks. It was a brilliant um, event, and uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. Was it was good Lapidus I hope, event, yeah. yeah. I hope we, I hope we, you know, yeah. going to go to the next one. I've been one. going to a few Lapidus things. Yeah. Yeah, because I've been going to. They do a mindfulness and creative writing one um, on a Friday, so I've been going to that, and that's been yeah. brilliant. And it's been really helpful. And a lady who's a professional mindfulness coach, and uh, what they do is they um, they get you, you go through some mindfulness uh, beforehand, and then you write after it and see what comes out because you're clearing your mind. That's and the clutter and the neg it was yeah, it's it been so really good. So I've been doing that in a Friday with Lapidus, and um, so really I've just been doing things with them. Is this ongoing, Angie? Is this ongoing? I think the Lapidus? mindfulness one's due to finish in a week or two, oh. but they might get funding to do something like that again because they've been getting really good um, results from it. You know, really yeah. good. Um, mm -hmm. What do you call it? Um, ah, really, really good comments about comments it. Comments and reviews. Yeah, well, it's reviews, like it's like because yeah. I, I on a Monday I, I go to. I mean, I don't know. I just saw advertise eco art. Oh um, right. Uh, you know, and I thought, what, what, what is eco art? You know, and it's about uh, sensory. You know, your, se your, you know, sense, your sensory feelings. Um, it's about nature and connecting things with nature, mm -hmm. like connecting things to water or the earth or, or, or a flower or a plant. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm learning yeah. so much. About it. It's really relax. Like mindfulness is really yeah. relaxing. You know, um, Martin Stepick, We um, read some of his books. His, his work the other week and uh, Martin Stepek, if you're listening, um, he said that he might come on. So we're, right. we're talking about mindfulness. So Martin, uh -huh. if you're um, willing to do a wee, <laughs> a, wee, a wee workshop for us, we'd be very grateful. Yeah. <laughs> I said I wouldn't yeah. advertise and listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's yeah. really, Angie, as you say, it's just so relaxing. It is. It, it focuses your mind, you uh -huh. know. Yeah, um, um, I've been finding it really helpful with my creative process. Um, the mindfulness has been really good. Absolutely, yeah, it's amazing yeah. as you say what comes come comes from it. Um, and mm -hmm. I think it's going to be bigger in the future. Mindfulness, I really do. I think that's there's more more of that to come because we need yeah. to find calm. We need to find space. We need to mm -hmm. because this is this COVID-19 thing, it's going to go on and on, so we really need to uh, connect mm -hmm. with something. Yeah. You know? I think yeah. mindfulness is like a modern rediscovery of old meditation, basically, That's and a it. Modern, modern take on it, yeah. Because mm -hmm. well, in Hindu religion, that have been meditating for thousands of years. Yeah. Like mi mindfulness is a modern, maybe a, a, a modern real discovery. Of meditation yeah. techniques, the idea is to, as you say, to clear the mind, mm -hmm. relax the body and stuff. So it's, 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 it's very much like that. It's, it's all very like, useful. 
yeah, use like a yoga and stuff, was very mindful and, you know, and things like prayer as well. People that are religious that pray, that's yeah. still quite mindful, you know, being well, in the it relaxes them, it clears their mind and it's yeah. something to focus on. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's, it's, yeah, absolutely. You know, we were at a Dovetails event and the Indian consulate, oh, really? um, mm-hmm. and it's just, just with what we're saying, and it's amazing how you learn about mindfulness from different cultures. And this is yeah. actually called a hisma. And if I could, right. read, it's really interesting, Angie, to read about it. Um, um, a hisma, a himsa, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, not some. A himsa means not to injure, and compassion refers to a key virtue in Hindu, Hinduism and Jainism. Ah, it right. is, also, is also referred to as non violence and applies to all living beings, including all animals in ancient Indian religions. Ahimsa is a multi-dimensional concept inspired by the premise that all living beings have the spark of the divine spiritual energy. Therefore, to hurt another being is to hurt oneself. Mm. Ahimsa has also been related to the notion that any violence has karmic consequences. While ancient, ancient scholars of Hinduism pioneered and over time perfected the principles of ahimsa, the concept reached an extraordinary status in the ethical philosophy of Jainism. Most popularly, most popularly is Mahatma Gandhi strongly believed in the principle of ahimsa. Mm. So, yeah. Hey, yeah. I, I mean, I just, you know, I, I think there's um, synergy going on because that, that was just mm. lying on that pile. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, who, yeah. It was not planned, as you can tell. <laughs> but, um, that was just and you know and I think we've just got so much to learn from different cultures as well it's absolutely just, yeah you know. and that's what poetry brings to people as well because the people bring their experiences from all over the world through their poetry you know if you look at Rumi and one of my favorites is a Persian poet Cal- Khalil Gibran I absolutely love his stuff on the prophet yeah. you know so kind of hearing things from you can you can read a lot about different cultures, but really feel it from poetry from other people, you know. Um, whereas you don't necessarily need to go to the country because they kind of bring you all the scents and smells and you know and 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 wonderful things that are in their country to you through their poetry, you know, through the imagery in their poetry as well, don't they? Oh, absolutely spot on. I mean, it's yeah. like as if you're transported, you know, uh-huh. say, to their country, just yeah. sitting. You know, listening. You might, you might, you know, might be in their own language, but I guess we can we can look at a transcript. But you, uh-huh. as you say, Angie, you actually feel it. You feel uh-huh. it so much. Yeah. Um, and it's, yeah. it's so nice when people actually speak in their own tongue. You yeah. know, you do. Mm-hmm. Like at Stanza, for example. You know, there were so many international poets from different yeah. countries as well. Mm-hmm. You know, and congratulations, you were brilliant. Um, oh, thank did, you. Yeah, did you enjoy that? That was great. Yeah, it was a really good day. I really enjoyed it. It was, um, I was really excited about it. And also kind of like, because it's like stanza, you know? <laughs> like, I was like, yeah, this gig. <laughs> you know, but they seemed to like it because it was like poetry and a pint, you know? Yeah. So it seemed to kind of, poetry, a pint, pie and a pint, it seemed to kind of work in well with sort of funny stuff I do. Well, that, those reviews, the, those reviews were very good. Very good about <laughs> you. So, I mean, I hope... I hope that you have the opportunity to get a, I'm not quite sure um, if it's going to be online on, uh, next March, but we'll see what happens, of course. But uh, right, yeah, we'll, yeah. All, we'll, we'll all go back. See it somehow. Yeah, I'll either go to it or watch it if it's on, you yeah. know, um, yeah. definitely do that because it was a, a lovely experience. I really enjoyed it. And it was a lovely day in St Andrews that day as well. And, you know, because I was performing, I got like free soup. <laughs> <laughs> It was just yeah. the whole, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's all the whole experience, you know, the whole yeah. experience of it. It's very lovely. We went up, um, we were um, at the, the book the book fair, weren't we, with the uh, Federation of Writers Scotland, the Scottish Writer Centre. Um, um, so Jennifer, um, we were all kind of, she was mm-hmm. at the Federation and um, Laura, Laura was doing this, her chat books at the Scottish Writers. So we're, only, we're only actually in Janet Crawford, so we're only there for a day. Um, yeah. But we're really, honestly, and the people that I met, like I met, do you know Tony Walsh at all? I met him. Ooh, Tony probably Walsh. bumped into him yeah. at some point, but you know, so, so, nice yeah, like, was he, and in one mm-hmm. day you meet so many people. Um, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, well, 
No, no, I mean, I hope, hope, uh, hope to see you performing more. You need, you need to tell us when you're... I've not been... I, I miss performing. Do you miss I know, we miss now? you. Oh. <laughs> yes, we really do. Uh, uh, last time I think I saw you was uh, in Glasgow. Um, you may have been Tell It Slant or something like that. Oh, or... the Mitchell Library, I think it was there. But, uh, oh, right. Yeah. So, yeah. I might be, yeah. I, I just, I, I, because I write for the air, I don't write for the page. And the moment I'm trying to put together, look at this, the work that I've already got, and I'm going to produce my own wee pamphlet. Yes. Because um, I put yeah. some money by. I saved my money from last year's business which was me a lot but I've saved that to spend to invest on a wee pamphlet and um but I don't think I've got enough poems that I'd be comfortable putting in it so I'm trying to kind of build up a yeah. few poems to put in it yeah. but just things like my Aldi one in the Ayrshire Seagull Massacre yes. and stuff like that, that and the is a brilliant thing. brilliant idea Angie because mm -hmm. this is yeah. not if you caught an opportunity you know, with, with this was what's going on you yeah, know, spoke, you're spoke, I know you're a spoken word artist, yeah. but this is an opportunity to actually put down a page that you uh -huh. normally never do. Yeah, and I'm quite yeah. frightened of that, you know, because although I've studied um, creative writing with Open University, whenever I put my work on page, I totally get flustered over, should I put a comma there or not? It's yeah. ridiculous, it kind of takes away the whole artistic side to it, because I'm wondering if I should put a comma or move that line here there and people read this the way I say it and stuff like this. But I just have to bite the bullet and go for it. I mean, well, you know, I'm probably going to lose a few hundred pounds. <laughs> are you going to be self-publishing? Are you going to be? Yeah, I'll probably self-publish. Because yeah. yeah. I think if I, if I wait too long, if I wait, hang about and wait for somebody to pick up and publish it, I could be hanging out for years. I just want to get out there. So, Listen, publishers, are you listening to Angie? <laughs> If you haven't heard Angie before, you, you know, I mean, that's that's just an example of all the, you know, the brilliant poems she's got. Uh, so <laughs> publishers, editors, please, oh. you know, take on the, that, you know, that work because you'll really, you'll never look back. She'll, she'll yeah, sell absolutely. for you. I'll, um, I'll, I'll see how it goes. I'll, I'll, I've got, you know, I'm not going to produce anything that's very spectacular in terms or sophisticated, but it's going to be, I've got to get my poems out there. Absolutely, absolutely. And of course, you know, you come. Maybe, maybe this is, as I say, an opportunity. Maybe you never did it like last year, but now's uh -huh. the time. Now's the right time. And as you say, yeah. right. Uh -huh. I guess, I guess, right. In any any book or pamphlet, we never rush with them. We just take our time, and then yeah. uh -huh. you'll have your book launch eventually. Yeah, because for a while I was trying to think, right? Okay, well, well I'd maybe do a, a pamphlet on my mental health poems because I go into organisations and perform poetry with the mental health team. Like maybe do that with my poem in stress and the failure yeah. bow and stuff like this, or will I do it this? And see, just now I just think, just get a big bundle of your best poems, <laughs> like you know, with a look like in the page. Because let's get somebody to illustrate the stuff for you, and then just. Fire it out. Fire it because out. otherwise yeah. I'll sit about for years thinking what to do, you know? Yeah. So I think if I maybe just kind of make that decision, then it'll, it'll be a bit, you know, something will happen with it. But um, yeah. yeah, so I get electricity in my shed tomorrow, eventually. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go in there and, and, you know, kind of work on that. And there's also another kind of project that I've had, which was uh, put together a uh, at the beginning of the year, it was the Edinburgh City Chambers um, oh. uh, performing some poetry and mental health for Head Torch. Oh, and I put together some sort of kind of presentation using like um, ideas like the stress bucket that people yes. use in organisations a poem in the stress bucket, a poem in the failure bow, you know, things like that. And those kind of concepts are quite kind of personally, kind of business like, but turn them into some. The Power of Play was another poem that I put yeah. in, you know. Um, I want to tweak that, I call it the vibe, and I want yeah. to tweak it and just make it that bit more polished so I can sell that at some point to other companies. So, you know, do you like me to come along? Yeah. I think, I think you know. as writers mm -hmm. or as spoken art, word artists, we're kind of knocked back. We, we, we're kind of surprised mm -hmm. when people say, I love that, I love that work, or um, uh -huh. that was amazing. Yeah. But the thing is, it's not because, you know, of fame or whatever, it's because, you know, we're so happy that it will benefit somebody else like you know the mental it. health you know like somebody's uh -huh. you know uh, it, that's what we're happy about you know you know mm -hmm. and uh, yeah that is, that's extraordinary and honestly it really will um mm -hmm. i remember when i did this um this thistle this thistle find thistle scribble, scribblers anthology oh yes I was, I, I, 
had a right and droop up at the um, the Thistle Foundation, and uh -huh. um, you know people, you know like people wrote their own poems in the book, uh -huh. and uh, you know it was like a like an anthology, but it was very cathartic for a lot of people. Yeah. A lot of people, it's very cathartic. But people relate to your poetry, Angie. Uh, you know, so you know, and, and you've seen because, that, yeah. you, you just you just got a gift. You know, oh. you've got a gift. You've got a, a like we were talking about comedy comedians earlier on. Mm -hmm. You've got a gift with it, you know, and uh, oh. and with that, so gift, you know, it's mm -hmm. really lovely that you can share that, you know, with so many people, and you're going to, isn't it? It's going to yeah. benefit so many, yeah. really. So good luck with well, it. Thank we want you. to warm. Yeah. It was, it's interesting so I was talking and I, every so often I go on a week kind of a creative writing meeting with a few people that I know that are you know interested in creative writing yeah. online and we were talking about yeah it was the other day they were talking about an idea for a writing prompt and one of them was why do you write and of course ah. I've gone through you know I've written this down quite often you know kind of Try to kind of get into the idea of why why I do right, mm -hmm. but for me it's very much what you say. It's about the connection with people. That's the word. It's like somebody yeah. coming up to me after a poem and them saying, "Do you know what I bought an Aldi? You know, <laughs> my poems about all the daft things you buy an Aldi. Come up and tell me the sort of daft things you buy it. That sort of connection, and I think that's really interesting to what you were saying about the hymns as well about how we all feel the same way somehow. We are all connected, yes. you know, yes. and um, there's something. I think because at first I thought, oh, maybe it's just because I'm a big show off and there's maybe some ego to it because I like the performance aspect, but it's not, it's the actual connection that I have exactly. to keep. Exactly, you know, I, mm -hmm. exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's it, yeah. honestly because, I mean, you know, I feel it, you don't want to be, I, I think it's just a Scottish thing, you don't want to be too big headed or whatever, <laughs> but it's it's not, I mean, it, when it connects to somebody, it's actually real, it's genuine, it's a genuine yeah. thing when somebody comes up and says, I thoroughly enjoyed that. You made me laugh uh, so much, or you know, I could relate to that. That means uh -huh. that means so much, it really does. Yeah, and you uh, must feel that yourself, Rose, when somebody comes up to you and say, You know, I really got this poem that it does make you feel really connected, doesn't it? It does, make exactly. You, yeah, and, uh -huh. and yeah. as you say, as you say, Angie, you, you, we just have to be natural, and then you know, mm -hmm. and you know, as you say, you're writing the book, we just have to go, you just go on with it and just yeah. do it, you know. Uh -huh. and, uh, that's that's yeah. the best way to go about it. And, yeah. You know, uh, in most, you know, most people will connect to. There'll be one or two that, that don't. We just have to, you know, people are never going to agree with you all the time or like you no. like all the. You know, it's just impossible. Yeah. I've learned that. You know, so uh -huh. this, so uh -huh. we we keep coming here every Monday because we feel for Blair and I we've been doing this since uh, since March. So uh -huh. it's just quite nice. Again, it's a connection, you know, and. Yeah. Uh, We'll, uh -huh. we'll, we'll keep at it, but I, I, I'm, I'm, we're absolutely over the moon. Thanks for coming on today. Oh, well, thanks for having me. It's been great fun. Sorry to come uh, earlier because, yeah, I was eating curry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. about to get a curry because I couldn't <laughs> bother eating. Uh, well, you know, it's on every Wednesday, but the, yeah. it's, it's fantastic. It's like as if you're going to a live venue or something. You just pop in. Yeah. Oh, you know, that often, sometimes that happens. I open mic, somebody pops in, and I. You know, and uh, yeah. thank you uh -huh. so much. Oh, no, thanks for having me. It's been really good chatting to you. You know, I, I, I miss my my, uh, my my poet friends. I miss kind of bumping into them at events and stuff like that. I know. I'm going to greet them in a minute. I, <laughs> I, do, do miss I them. really do. It's not the same uh -huh. one. I mean, it's nice online on Facebook, but it's never yeah. the same. Um, no, it's not. It's all, it's all the live same. there. Yeah. So I'll just pass on to Blair. You want to say a few words, Blair? Want to say no, I'm fine. Just say cheerio, Oh, of course. And there we go. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Yeah. Thanks. I really yeah. enjoyed the poem, the Roman poem. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. thank you. I enjoyed your poetry very much. So thank you. We'll see you again soon. Yeah, no doubt. We'll definitely bump into each other again soon, yeah. either yeah. online or yes. at an event. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh dear, well, that's great. Well, thank, thanks everybody. Um, this will actually be going up online, so I hope you enjoyed the show. Um, um, but this will be up on uh, YouTube. Um, and uh, we really look forward, if you want to pop in any Wednesday between, what, seven and eight or so, mm -hmm. um, and we'd love to see you any Wednesday. But yeah. thank you again for a special thanks day again. tonight. Thank you. Bye!
Bye. 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 Bye.